we have to do an update on Seattle's Chaz, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. And we got a few stories I want to get to about this today. First, MyNorthwest.com, a look inside Seattle's newly formed Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. On Monday, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin announced that police at the city's east precinct would be leaving the area and reopening streets that had been blocked off for almost two weeks. It didn't take long before what's become known as the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone began to take shape. Barriers originally set up by police have been repurposed to set up the borders of the zone. What used to be the Seattle Police Department on the corner of 12th and Pine now reads Seattle People Department. KIRO Radio's Hannah Scott and Nicole Jennings spent time in the Chaz Tuesday watching for hours as 100 or so people began setting up tents, putting up signs, and preparing to set up camp as part of their ongoing protest against police brutality. As she reported, it was really, it was a really energetic day, really a whole different vibe than I'd seen the other nights I've been here. A very peaceful experience, almost like a street fair, honestly. And that's, this is so beautiful. Now, I, I'll tell you, I'm not really optimistic. Man, I, why am I saying that again? For the long-term uh, success of Chaz as truly being a kind of sovereign, autonomous community. There are signs outside that say, you are leaving the USA. And this is great. This is Now, I, I didn't realize that the, the, the best uh, analogy that we have for this is not micronation. Because like, I'm really tempted. Jim, remember when we started covering the story? I'm like, yes, we have a new country, a new micronation, the Chaz, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, claiming sovereignty, claiming to not be part of the USA. But I don't think, or, you know, right away I saw, like, they don't really have solid ground to stand on. They don't really have the footing to do that. So th this is more like the Occupy Wall Street protests. Except that it didn't start, except in process, it's kind of backwards, right? Where they're not saying, oh, we're going to go occupy and claim this park, and that's the purpose of this, and we're going to protest uh, wealth inequality and everything that, that Wall Street represents, right? Um, this was, we were protesting, we're confronting police, we chased the police off. Hey, cool, we can claim this protest zone for ourselves. And that seems kind of what this is. It's more like a protest zone. It's like a free protest zone with no cops. It's great. And is there a community there? And this is this is why I'm going to be watching this so closely and, and, and continuing to bring y'all updates is to see, will the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone pro, uh, transition from being more like an Occupy protest to being an actual micronation of some sort or a uh, meaningful autonomous zone that is that is not part of the USA in a legal way. In a sense, they've already done it. Like, let's show mad respect for what they have accomplished in a way that Occupy never did, right? With the, all of the Occupy encampments, you had police just, you know, walking through day or night, like no big deal. Like it wasn't, yeah. We're, in the Capitol Hill autonomous zone, they have really effectively said, yeah, no police here. This is a a community law enforcement, not government law enforcement zone. That in and of itself is huge in assertion of sovereignty away from centralized governments. And I cannot applaud them enough for having achieved that. And I know a lot of people are going, Adam, you're defending communists. When they do the right thing, uh, yeah. When they're pulling in our direction on the side of freedom, yeah. When they're showing people, hey, look, you don't have to be part of the centralized government anymore. You can opt out and be free and sovereign and autonomous. <laughs> yeah, damn right. I'm going to support and defend and promote what they're doing, regardless of whether they are their ideology is just like mine. And for those voices who want to take that criticism, you are playing right into the hands of divide and conquer, away from bottom unity, away from people's unity against the existing power structures. If we don't hang together, Surely, we will continue to hang separately. 
Nicole also described free food and medical aid available for demonstrators on every corner. Some food and supplies were also distributed to the homeless population in the surrounding area. The group even reportedly organized its own garbage collection Wednesday morning. <clears throat> so there's some controversy about who's included in this, but it's obvious that a lot of the efforts are coming in from external sources, people who aren't necessarily living there, but consider themselves part of that community. I think there are going to be a lot of people setting up moving in. There are going to be a lot of people bringing resources in who want to see the autonomous zone succeed. And honestly, if I was in Seattle, that's what I would be doing. You know, if I, if I was a resident of the area and I had extra supplies that they needed, I would go and support them materially in doing this. More so than anything else that came, has come out of Black Lives Matter, this is, is, is absolutely righteous and, and worthy of material support. Just like I would say, you know, more so than the protests, people doing meaningful police reform work deserve direct support. And so there was an incident, we saw a video earlier today, where a couple of police went to the third precinct office to get things out of it. And one of the things that's cool about this is they did it without burning down any buildings. You know, they didn't have to destroy the third precinct building. It's still there. They could repurpose it. It just, they just spray painted all over it, you know, like graffiti. And they've crossed out police and re to re replace it with people. So it's the Seattle People Department. Love it. You know, so already a more peaceful alternative to getting the police out of your community and asserting sovereignty. Amazing. Later on in the night, a projector screen was set up as the crowd gathered to watch Ava DuVernay's documentary on systemic racism in the U.S. prison system, 13. News of that reached DuVernay herself, who gave the group a shout out on Twitter. The crowd stationed at 12th and Pine is trying to prove it can operate on its own without the police no longer occupying the East Precinct. Their position is they can take care of themselves. The group also recently published a lengthy 30-point list of demands for Seattle City Council and the mayor's office. Some go far beyond what council members like Teresa Mosqueda and Shama Suwant have proposed in recent days, including a call to abolish the Seattle Police Department and the attached criminal justice apparatus. So this reminds me of the more comical, and, and I, I hope, and I, the, 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 like one of the things I, I, I'll say uh, I'd like to see improved with Chaz is uh, let's bring some more comedy into it. You know, it's got to be lighthearted and fun and positive. Uh, you know, to, to maintain that attitude of non-confrontation and de-escalation with authorities. It's like that John Lennon quote, you know, they will flick your nose and pull your beard, anything to get you angry and fighting, because that they can deal with. The one thing that they don't know how to fight back against is love and humor. And so I'm thinking of, you know, the uh, the, the, the Conch Republic, the Florida Keys, and my friend Stephen Akela, who's such a, a great booster of this tongue-in-cheek sovereign status of a nation that said we are sovereign because the Border Patrol set up a checkpoint on the one causeway out to the Florida Keys. They got the policy changed, they took the checkpoint down, and they rejoined the United States. So I see kind of that here with this list of demands, right? If the city, uh, you know, concedes to a major portion of the list of demands, then a lot of the raison d'etre for Chaz goes away. And a lot of the momentum goes away. And then the question is, is there a, a sustainable community in this exact geographic area that, that, that gives this uh, longevity beyond this immediate list of demands? Or do they all go, oh, our demands are met. We moved here because we love Seattle. We still love Seattle. Now that Seattle's better, oh, we'll, we'll go back to being a part of Seattle in the USA, right? So there's, there's a really cool dynamic with that, too, of using this as leverage to reform policy and say, we're going like, to gonna, we're gonna establish our independence until you change these things, at least. You know, and well, maybe you're not going to fully recognize our independence, but we're going to push. We're going to make it hard for you. If you're going to do these things. We're going to make it hard for you to keep us as part of your city. <clears throat> now, to the next story from the Washington Times. A little bit more of a negative view on Chaz. Seattle's autonomous zone is Mad Max movie mayhem. Come alive. And this is analysis opinion, analysis slash opinion from Cheryl K. Chumley. In the late 1970s, a series of action movies starring Mel Gibson as Mad Max showed what life in Australia would be like when the inmates, so to speak, take over the asylum and societal standards of behavior utterly collapse and motorcycle gang members with zero moral bearing unleash their violence onto the public. 
That's scenes from Seattle, circa 2020. All right, before we get into the sphere mongering, we're going to interrupt for, I hope this is a relevant super chat. Yeah. Ooh, gangster talk weighing in for $4.99. Tucker Carlson was bad mouthing Chaz on Fox News. Any comments? Uh, Tucker, Fox News, controlled opposition, propaganda outlet. Do I really care to respond to that in particular? No, of course he's going to. And, you know, I mean, I, you could say I'm bad mouthing them because I'm saying I disagree with this or that of what they're doing. But, like, no, I'm celebrating this and, and promoting this. And I think if, if uh, you know, Tucker uh, isn't a red coat loyalist, then he would be taking the same attitude to everybody who is fighting for freedom in this realm of asserting sovereignty like this, because that's how this country got here. So to say that Tucker Carlson is the modern equivalent of a media lapdog pro-establishment loyalist, I think that's gently summing it up, and I don't need to say anything more than that. That's how Seattle seems right now with protesters take over of City Hall, expelling police from the area and establishing a six-block section of the community as an autonomous zone, meaning free of law and order. No! Free of the chaos of the police. This is an increase in law and order when it comes to the natural law, the law that means ethics. What the freak America? It's a mad, mad, mad max world out there actually in here within the boundaries of what used to be a nation run by law and order, a constitution and structured government. No, we've never had that. At times we've had peaceful periods of exploitation and ripoff, and we've had times of upheaval where the government got out of control or the people have tried to stand up to that. But no, this whole time, a nation run by law and order? No, under the Articles of Confederation, the Constitution that we are under today was illegal, is illegal. So we have had a lawless nation since 1789 with the ratification of our current Constitution, where, what this person claims is a Constitution structured government, structured to rip you off. What kind of enthusiastic slave are you? The rabbit foxes are within the hen house. No, that's what it's been this entire time. We're starting to see that finally change. As uh, the Daily Mail reported, she quotes here, reports emerge that appear Raz Simone has established himself as a warlord within Chaz. The guy with the sane response, President Donald Trump, is the guy who's been characterized as off his rocker. It hasn't been clear for years that Donald Trump is off his rocker? This is not a game, Trump said after protesters established a perimeter and booted out police demanding the end of racial injustice and the demands of dismantling of law enforcement departments. Damn right it's not a game. You are killing people with the government. Stop it. He labeled the protesters domestic terrorists, and they are. Really? Now, this, this gets to Black Lives Matter and the general attitude of the white Karens of America. And to all the Karens out there, get some freaking perspective. You should be relieved with the amount of restraint that black Americans have shown over the last 200 years. You should be grateful that they want equality, not revenge. You want to look at the body counts? You want to put the evils that we're talking about on any kind of measurable scale? No. The U.S. government is the terrorist here. Take back your city now, Trump tweeted to Governor Jay Inslee and to Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin. If you don't do it, I will. This is not a game. These ugly anarchists must be stopped immediately. Move fast. Only Trump spelled stopped as stooped by mistake. Mm -hmm. So how did Durkin and Inslee respond with mocking and derision? A man who's totally incapable of governing should stay out of Washington State's business. Stoop tweeting. I love it. That was the response from Inslee. And from Durkin, this tweet, make us all safe, go back to your bunker. But if any time called for tough, aggressive policy or even military crackdown to quell the violence on America's streets, this is it. These are not poor, misguided youth exercising their First Amendment rights. These are criminals, violent criminals, intimidating law, abiding innocent citizens with their criminal behavior and threats. No, that's what police do. 
Police are criminals. They are violent criminals. They intimidate law-abiding innocent citizens with their criminal behavior and threats. That's what government is. Citizens can't take over city streets and demand identification of anyone who seeks to enter. That's that's from the Karen writing this story. You colonists, you can't just declare your independence from the king. You must be part of the British Empire. How dare you? Clutch his pearls. Protesters, no matter how angry, no matter the cause, can't gate off whole blocks of streets and patrol to keep out police. Uh, they just did. Hello? Social justice activists can't corral off roads and sections of cities, keeping businesses within their established borders from conducting business, preventing residents captured within their declared autonomous zone from coming and going as pleasing and safety just because they have a list of demands. Uh, well, actually, they can, but it's not because they have a list of demands. It's because they're willing to back them up and put their bodies on the line to do this. As the Daily Mail reported, armed men are seen manning checkpoints and controlling entry to the chats. Police say they have received complaints that protesters, protesters are demanding cash to enter the zone and shaking down businesses inside the zone for protection money. And then in the in the column here, this is so funny. This is America? Question mark. This isn't America. Uh, hello? Trump's trade war with China? Hello? Every tariff that this country has ever enforced? Hello? Shaking down businesses inside the zone for protection money? You've heard of taxes, right, Karen? What, what else is that? Your business getting shaken down by government for protection money. And what's worse is that they won't even let you go to a different provider of protection services. This is the new empire, the new red coat saying you must be part of this centralized system. Now, the summary of this here is a photographed sign on one of the barricades the protesters said around their perimeter read, you are now leaving the USA. Sadly, horribly, that's just not true. And in this sense, Karen, sadly, you're right. Because the government of the United States will not respect this. Going ahead to ComoNews.com, swift action recommended by police experts to take East Precinct back from Chaz. Some are calling for swift action to take back the East Precinct that has been surrounded by protesters in the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone or Chaz. The Seattle Police State affecting the way police deal with public safety in the entire city. As Fuda, Jim Fuda, 33-year-old law enforcement ex expert and director of law enforcement services for Crime Stoppers, which works with Seattle Police Department, said the department needs to take back the precinct sooner rather than later with negotiations and more. Quote, they're going to have to be dealt with. It can't continue like that. Some action is going to have to be taken. Is there federal laws broken? Does the FBI need to come in? But at some point, arrests and these people are going to have to be removed if they don't move. You know, I don't know where this is going, but if it comes to it, I might go stand in the way myself there. If they want to say that these are these people are criminals because they violated the same federal laws that would make the founders of this country criminals, oh yeah, I'll stand with them. I don't think this is going to last very long, however. From king5.com, Trump threatens to take back the city if Seattle... State officials don't. President Donald Trump told Governor Jay Inslee and Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin that they need to take back the city from protesters. On Monday, a Wednesday night, Trump tweeted to Governor Jay Inslee and Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin telling them, take back your city now. If you don't do it, I will. Now, this wouldn't be such a scary threat if we weren't already in the coronaphobia lockdown state of martial law with National Guard troops on the streets of America's cities. But that's where we are. And that's what makes this especially scary. The redcoats are coming. The redcoats are coming. 
but they are not wearing red coats. They are wearing SWAT uniforms and suits. And worse yet, some of them look just like the rest of you in the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. And I would bet money that right now there is a government agent dressed in black, wearing sunglasses and a bandana over his face in the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. A foreign agent, a spy, in violation now of international law himself, perhaps. The redcoats are coming. I don't think that this is the place to stand our ground, but this might be the scene of the Boston massacre of this revolution. George Floyd, perhaps from a city far from Seattle, from Minneapolis, the Christmas attics of our day, the rallying cry for the final American revolution of peaceful localization, of declaring your community as big as small, as big or small as you like, an autonomous zone. So thank you to those of you for the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone for showing the world what is possible in standing up to tyranny. I'm <laughs> sorry.